I now give the floor to Madame Michelle Connix. You have the floor, ma'am. Buenos dias. Uh, Good morning, and thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Council, uh, Mr. Executive uh, Director, national and international experts, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin by commending Peru for the efforts over the past uh, year to enhance the Council's uh, consideration of the challenges involved uh, in addressing the linkages between terrorism and organized crime and to assist the member states to identify solutions. Those efforts have included an area formula meeting uh, on cooperation between the United Nations and uh, regional organizations, a thematic open briefing, and a special meeting highlighting regional specificities. They have also been reflected in the renewed impetus given to this issue on the Council's agenda. The Council has continued to hold open uh, upon the terrorism financing related provision of its resolution 1373, notably through its ad adoption of resolution 2395 and recently 2462. The territorial losses sustained by ISIL have certainly contributed to the group's efforts to access funds through a wide range, range of criminal activities, including drug trafficking, weapon sales, kidnapping and extortion. Other groups, including Al-Qaeda and its affiliates, have sought similar financing avenues. And I wish to reiterate the determination of CETAT to strengthen our understanding of member states' approaches and responses to the links between terrorism and organized crime. Over the past year, CETAT has actively contributed to a number of international conferences workshops and expert meetings focusing on these links, including at the Council of Europe, the GCTF, OSCE, the EHE, and the APG. I also welcome the close partnership developed in this area between CETAT, UNODC, and UNICRI, which has proven extremely fruitful in terms of the delivery of capacity building assistance, issuance of dedicated reports, and policy guiding tools. In his work on behalf of the Counterterrorism Committee, including within the framework of the above-mentioned events, CTAD has also become aware of a number of academic and research initiatives on this issue. And I commend uh, the contribution of research and academic community, and I'm particularly pleased to be here today with Mrs. Tamara um, Makarenko, uh, who is one of the pioneers of research in this area. And within the framework of the country assessment visit conducted on behalf of the CTC, CTAT continues to engage with national authorities on the perception of the link between terrorism and organized crime, as well as on identified cases in which um, such links have been detected. We have identified a number of relevant state practices, including the creation of joint investigation teams and prosecution authorities to handle both organized crime and terrorism. However, we continue to note a significant disconnect between the level of concern expressed by policymakers, the implementation of legal frameworks addressing both terrorism and transnational organized crime, and the actual level of investigation and prosecution of cases involving both criminal and terrorist groups. Mr. President, while I recognize that the links can take different forms depending on the geographic, political and economic context, there are some specific areas that we could explore in greater depth, both to better understand the link and to address them in a more effective way. First, in its recently adopted addendum to the guiding principles on foreign terrorist fighters, the committee recalls the need to intensify and accelerate the timely exchange of financial intelligence, including with a view to effectively identifying potential linkages between terrorism and organized crime. Second, the role of financial intelligence units should be strengthened. Financial intelligence units play a central role in states' anti-money laundering and counter-financing of terrorism efforts, but remain generally underused in the context of counter-terrorism. 
third, the understanding of criminal and terrorist activities achieved by intelligence services is not always reflected uh, at the investigative and prosecutorial levels, where agencies responsible for countering terrorism and those responsible for countering organized crime too often tend to operate in silos. Inter-institutional barriers to information sharing, including between and among local and national authorities, should be overcome. Fourth, member states should also conduct terrorism financing national risk assessments, which provide an opportunity to detect and respond to active or passive interactions between terrorists and criminal groups. The participation of private sector and civil society in such exercises can greatly facilitate the development of policy responses. And lastly, links between terrorism and organized crime may, de may develop, develop rather, in prison settings, thereby increasing the possibility of radicalization or the development of connections that will enable terrorists to gain access to criminal networks. It's therefore essential that states increase the capacity of the relevant practitioners to detect and deter such links. I look forward to hearing more about member states' approaches and experiences in all these areas. Events such as today's open debate enable us to reaffirm our joint commitment to combating all forms of support for terrorist groups and individuals, as well as to promoting regional and international cooperation through the dissemination of relevant tools and practices. Rest assured that CTAT will continue to contribute actively to those efforts, and I do thank you, Mr. President.